Go Island is brought to you by German Auto Import Network. What would life be without color and atmosphere? That's what we're looking at today through the eyes and art of Teresa Knight. Bringing new life into a piece of Ladysmith history, world-class potter Mary Fox and the changing face of Harewood. Today we are at the Macmillan Arts Centre in Parksville and it's a pretty busy place. We have an artist in residence here painting away behind. I didn't warn Todd about this. He's going, Kate, but there's windows over there. She's working away here on Tuesdays. There's a Tuesday art group, painting group that we're going to check in later. But our main purpose to be here today is to look at the work of the artist Teresa Knight. Talk to her about colour and atmosphere. So we're, we're hanging out in style, artistic style today on Go Island. We're starting things off story-wise down in Ladysmith though, the growing list of things to enhance tourism and vibrancy and life in the community of Ladysmith is growing and the latest on the list is a cooperative venture at an old building on First Avenue. We're here at the Macmillan Art Centre in Parksville. Hanging on the walls behind the wall behind me is the work of Teresa Knight. It's been described as just left of realistic that has a way of capturing the mood and personality of a subject or a scene in a way that can't be described with words. Which leads me to the question, are you trying to speak? Are you trying to say something through your artwork? Well, yes. Of course, it's easier to say it with a painting, and that's why I paint, but every painting has some sort of a story behind it. Right, there's a whole lot of personality captured and mood captured in this image. This one's the easiest one to talk about because, in fact, this is uh, me when I was a little kid. Oh. And, um... Is it based off a photograph? It is, and memory, too. Okay. My memory from being inside that head. And what, what are you remembering? What's happening around you at this point? Well, I thought it was a perfect picture to show how kids are completely helpless in the hands of whoever's taking care of them. So here is my dad washing my hands. But you can see through the painting that I really have no control over the situation at all. And every kid is in this situation. And just in order to realize how helpless kids are and how they are in our hands, or in that case, I was in their hands. And whichever way things go is the way things go. So there's an innocence there. Innocence there and a lot of responsibility here. Right. So a lot going on in that painting. Now this looks like a helplessness it's the of same, another kind. It's the same situation, only this is an animal, and I feel very strongly about animals. And they, to a great extent, are also in our hands. So this one here is hopefully being helped, being rescued from being smashed into the patio window or whatever. And will survive. We hope. Yeah, so it's called a helping hand. But I had another one, very similar, which will be in next month's show. And it's, um, the precursor is this one, and it's just called So Beautiful because the poor little thing died. And it's a sad one, this is what happens. And to really look at how beautiful these birds are when we don't even notice them from day to day. And if we really get a close up look, and that it's actually a tragedy on the same proportions as it would be for a human, from my point of view. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. sort of, these are parallel paintings to me. In my mind, there's no difference between the kid in our hands and the animal in our hands. Thank you. We're going to look at more of color and atmosphere here at the Macmillan Art Center, an exhibit featuring the work of Teresa Knight. We're going to look at a couple other things that are going on here as well after a short break. Still to come today, spinning ceramics with Mary Fox and a plan for the future of Harewood. Did you know that the first ever couple to be shown in bed on primetime television was Fred and Wilma Flintstone from the Flintstone show? Look how far we've come today on television. You are watching Go Island on Shaw TV Channel 4. We're here hanging out with the ladies who call themselves the Tuesday Painters. This is Studio B and the energy is fantastic. The quality of the work is outstanding and we're going to have a closer look because these ladies have a little exhibit going 
in um, the concert gallery, I think it is. I'm just familiarizing myself with the Macmillan Art Centre over the last couple of months, and it's an honour to do so. We're continuing on with our theme of art today on Go Island. Well, art and municipal politics, it would seem. We're throwing things over to Jocelyn Matley, who is spending some time with world-renowned potter, Mary Fox. From pottery to more paintings from Teresa Knight here at the Macmillan Art Center in Parksville. Talk about atmosphere. This, this painting just oozes it. What is the story or the scene for this one? This is, I was visiting Vancouver where I lived for a long time and I was just coming from an art opening around the corner. I had an art opening and it was a rainy, misty evening and I looked up and there was that scene I thought I have to paint it. Mm. It just I, I, I thought of rain for some reason it when I saw it. Yeah. It was one of those rainy, misty evenings, and it was just so beautiful with the light against the sky. And I thought, well, living in the country now, this is the urban version of a moon. So that's why it's oh. called urban moon. It's like, well, it's just like the country, except that that's the moon, and these are the trees, and so on. Right. So. Now, just left of realistic. We're going to have a look at this one because they, they're all somewhat blurred. Yeah. And that's obviously very intentional. Do you want. Well, it could be my eyesight. Yeah, I wonder if that actually, we're looking <laughs> at um, here. a Monet, you know, I had to analyze him in high school, and I thought yeah. maybe the guy was just blind. They, like, said that, <laughs> they said that about Giacometti, the guy that did the really tall people, that they said that he couldn't actually see properly, but I have my doubts, because if he saw them tall and thin, then they'd be twice as tall and thin on the canvas. Right. So. Right, right. It's Sorry. always fun conversations when you talk about art. So this is across the street from your current house. It's just up the road from my current house, and this is the most peaceful scene we are seeing sheep in the pasture in early spring, and having moved over from Vancouver, maybe almost 10 years ago now, I was just blown away by seeing happy sheep running around in a pasture for real, you know. As like, opposed to unhappy, grumpy sheep. Yeah, those grumpy <laughs> ones that hang around Vancouver in the back alleys. Anyway, I was just really, really amazed to see them and just thought that's a scene I have to paint, so. And you can't live here without portraying the water. Yes. And, and the, the ocean. They just left of realism. You can see it is realistic, but it's, not quite, so that's my own input. And that's what realism is when you're talking art. Well, realism, yeah, a realistic portrayal of, of it. And not quite like a photograph, because there's photographic realism too, but realism, you're expecting it to look really like the subject. And it's recognizable as the subject, but with a twist. Okay. You know, if you saw the photo or saw that scene, something would be different, like the color scheme might be a bit off, or I've blurred it, as you said, or my interpretation of it. So that's where I get just left. And then just left, of course, is I'm just a little left of center in my animal views and, and so on. So it wouldn't be just right of center for me. Love it. Love it. Now this work over here is obviously not yours. These are from some of your students. You've been teaching a yeah. long time. And this woman here has only been at it for about a year? This is ridiculous, but this student of mine has been painting for a year or so. Really took one eight-week class with me. And by the time she was, she did that in the first class. Wow. And then has gone on to this, and now is painting those dogs down the way, and this looks like you can't tell who's the instructor and who's the student. So I'm very pleased with her, and I guess she's pleased too. And look at that. Excellent. Now you also teach in the, in the school district? I'm a teacher on call. All levels, high school, yeah. elementary? Automotive, robotics, whatever you can Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an art teacher, but whatever right. they call you for is what you got to do. So I've had some adventures. Mm. Okay, an artist teaching robotics. Robotics, automotive. Very interesting. There's some inspiration. Mm. Um, this is a, another beach scene by one of your students. And we purposely picked this one because you were in a scene similar recently? Yes. Here's my student walking her dog in an idyllic situation. And if you've been wondering what this mark is on my face, I wish it was more dramatic, but there I was in a similar situation walking my dog, and I simply fell flat on my face on a log, so <laughs> a dramatic story. <laughs> the price you pay when you're out researching for your work, enjoying the scenery exactly. that gets hung on the walls at art galleries locally. We're going to be back with more on Go Island after a short break. You're watching Go, we're in Parksville at the Macmillan Arts Centre and this place is a hub of activity. I think I could have stood in the doorway and just handed out business cards. I, I have collected 
a few notifications on events. The Mid-Island Storytellers have lots of events coming up, and I ran into Marva Blackmore. She is very involved with the group Professional Level Storytelling. Uh, they've got things coming up on March 28th, April 25th, May 6th. The best thing to do, because it was just handed to me a moment ago, is visit their website, midislandstorytellers.com. Color and atmosphere, the work of Teresa Knight is on the walls here at the center until the end of March. And then she's turning around and working on another exhibit that starts on April the 1st. And it is called Animals in Our Humanscape and sort of looks at how we love and adore and spoil perhaps some animals in our lives and then neglect and abuse others. And so that's an exhibit that is open, which means that you can just drop by and drop off some art and it, likelihood of it being included in the exhibit is very good. So that's all I know. Again, it's just a hub of activity, including the Tuesday Painters. We're going to show you their exhibit quickly before the end of this edition of Go Island. If you want to find out more, the best place to, th to go, uh, don't listen to me too much. Call the McMillan Arts Center and you can do that at the phone number that I've got here, 248-8185. And of course, they have a website as well. We're throwing things over now to Derek Johnstone, another group of uh, very enthusiastic, dedicated and hardworking people is the Harewood Neighborhood Association and there are some major changes in store for that area. Here's Derek. Ten years seems like a long time, but it really goes by quickly. That brings us to the end of this edition of Go Island. This is some of the work from the Tuesday Painters who we met earlier here at the MAC in Parksville. This is the concert gallery. I really encourage you to come on by, drop in, absorb some of the energy, and experience some of the art. Thanks for watching this edition of Go. We'll see you next time. Go Island is brought to you by German Auto Import Network. Clothing supplied by Catwalk Fashions. Kate's hair and aesthetics provided by Maffeo Salon.